I want to welcome you. I want to officially welcome you to the first conversation you and I have had face to face, mm-hmm. face to face. I popped up on your lives. You popped up on my lives. Um, I've been watching you for a while. Like uh, TikTok knows, you know, my style, right? <laughs> Obviously, you and I, <laughs> right? We got a little bit of this, this old scroll, this like, is it's kind of like, like bad bitch meets old time, old time, right? Like, it's just, I love, I love the marriage between how we're kind of bringing back how we used to be when it came to dating and relationships. And some people might say it's old fashioned, but I don't call it old fashioned. It's common sense. It should be, let me take that back. It's not common sense. It's, it's not common knowledge, but we need to reintroduce it as common sense and common knowledge because our current dating trend is to kiss a stranger and hope for the best. And what I'm reintroducing is find out who someone is and then pick the right person and not go through all these difficulties. And so that's like the angle that I bring to dating and relationships. The angle you bring is let's understand, and I hear you use the word archetypes. Mm-hmm. Let's understand who people are, dividing them into categories, which is something that I do too, right? Generous long-term thinker, selfish short-term thinker, but you're bringing a whole new language to this. And that's why I want to have this conversation with you today, because it's interesting that you talk about these different personality types and there's different male personality types, different female personality types. And I want to bring you here to tell my people about these different types because let's let's think about this you know let's let's kind of open our eyes and and see what are we and what are they and how can we fit with them you know depending on who we are so do you want to dive into this for me what are what are let's start with the female archetypes yeah so um you know first and foremost whenever you're getting into a relationship there's always a masculine, there's always a feminine, we have both within us, but in a partnership, somebody has to lead, somebody has to be the dominant, and somebody has to be the follower, essentially, right? So you have to discover, as a woman, am I a masculine woman? Do I like to take charge? Do I like to share my ideas? Do I like to uh, be in control of things, right? You cannot be with a masculine man if you behave that way, right? But a lot of women find more feminine men to kind of follow their lead. And it works really well, right? A lot of women uh, will say, well, I want a masculine man, but they don't want to tone down that masculine energy they have to be a feminine woman to attract in a masculine man, right? Because the masculine is the pursuer. So a lot of times women take on the role of being the pursuer and they think, well, we're in modern times, it'll work. I can get any guy like this, but you can't. If you become the pursuer in the very beginning, you're setting the tone already that you're the masculine in that relationship. So the different qualities of the female archetypes is the girl, lover, queen, and mother. And this is about the, you know, the um, evolution of a woman, right? You, you have your girl phase of being naive, being open, carefree, creative, you know, a little bit gullible, like you're kind of like bright eyed and bushy tailed about life, you see things through rose colored glasses, which you know, a lot of um, women have this still as an adult, right. And then you have the lover aspect of who you are, which is how you connect to your sexuality, your, your femininity, how you uh, feel about yourself, if you feel confident, if you feel sexy, Uh, dressing yourself nice, you know, like, for instance, like the girl mother archetype or the queen mother, for example, she lacks that sex appeal, like Hillary Clinton is a queen mother, she doesn't have any real sex appeal to her, right? She's very masculine. So you know, there's women like this, too. The queen is a woman who has a target goes for it. She usually develops in her late 20s, early 30s. Um, she, you know, has dreams, ambitions, drive to do something. Some women have it more so than others. Some women have no real big goals, ambitions, and dreams, and that's okay. They may have a little hobby work. So that's more of like a girl lover would be. And then the queen is the wise woman and the queen is the, or the mother is the wise woman. So she's a woman who saves, she's practical. Um, she has jobs like a lot of time in like nursing or, um, humanitarian stuff. Um, if she's a girl mother, she'll be more so like in the home where she wants to be 
the woman who's practical, the woman who saves money, she manages the income. That's why she goes well with the entrepreneur because he's a little uh, spendy and she's a woman who stays home. So he likes that about her. But if she's a queen mother, uh, she goes with more of a creative man who would stay home, raise the kids. And she's more of a woman who wants to help the world like a Ruth Bader Ginsburg would, right? And her husband stayed home. He left his law job to be a stay-at-home father. So there's many different elements that you can kind of fall into or develop as a woman. Like I have a lot of women that are like, well, I'm a queen. I want a dominant man. How do I become more of a girl lover? And some women can kind of bounce between the two if you know how to develop it, which I go over in my workshops, but some women are just natural Queens. And if you're naturally a queen or a masculine woman, accept it and embrace it and find a man that supports that. Right. So. Yeah. I love it. How you say it doesn't matter what kind of relationship you're in. There's that male female dynamic and being someone who has been with women, like, you know, I, I'll say I, I used to be bisexual and I say I used to be because now I think I'm just sexually lazy. Like, I just don't care to do anything more than what I'm currently doing with my husband. Like, ah, oh, fuck it. Right. <laughs> um, you know, just so but like very much for like decades, I was very bisexual. And um, what I notice, and, and it's definitely by like, because I love being with men and I love being with women. And it was about that energy shift. It wasn't about the sexuality itself. It was about the shift in energy that I felt being with one versus being with the other. And I liked feeling the duality mm -hmm. for, you know, because when I was with a man, I was very much feeling the feminine side. But when, when I was with women, I was the masculine male energy. And, you know, it's, it's not, something that you really super saw. Although I think people would pick up on like my protective nature, my, and so I certainly did have that protectiveness with my women, but I very instinctively shifted into a male mode with the women that I was with. And I always picked very feminine women. All the women I were, were very feminine. I like them shorter than me, right? Like I just, I just took on the male role and I felt the male role and I enjoyed the male role with the women that I was with. So, um, and it, you know, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I also do feel that there is sort of in same sex relationships, there is, uh, you know, I, I know men don't want to call themselves female. I know females don't want to call themselves male, but there's some role, there's some roles that go on, I think that maybe kind of fall into what it is that you're saying. Um, let's talk about the way it's a way of being, it's a way of being, are you going to be in the masculine energy of drive, ambition, control, or like, you know, doing action, you know, action-based stuff, or are you going to be in the feminine energy role, um, of receiving of, you know, allowing that man to come forward and pursue you and, you know, be the more of a listener than a talker or more of a follower versus leader. And, you know, some relationships can kind of go in between, like, you know, sometimes you might be leading at this and you're really good at that. And sometimes you can lead at other things and you can kind of have that dual thing, but usually most of the time there is a dominant, more dominant leader in the relationship. And see, a lot of times I find that you know, women want, they don't want to relinquish that control. A lot of women want, and, and control comes from a place of fear a lot of time, right? They feel like if they control a man or if they control what he's doing and all that stuff or what's going on, then she's in control and he's not going to leave her or it's not going to crumble if she's in charge, right? And a lot of us were kind of like raised to be in charge because we we're raised by women who went through the, you know, they saw their mothers possibly being oppressed or all this stuff. So we were raised to be like liberated women, but you know, you can be a liberated woman, but with a masculine man, there's a fine line in, you know, liberation versus like, you know, the, I guess the uh, shadow aspect of the queen, which would be an Amazon woman, a woman who emasculates a man says, I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. I can do it better than you. And also the mother energy of a, of a man, of a woman who wants to fix a man's problems, right? She wants to fix everything for him and not allow him to find the solutions, right? The masculine wants to find the solution, right? Mm -hmm. So then the, the lines become blurred. And a lot of times women will end up becoming the masculine in the relationship. And then she's upset that he's lazy. He doesn't court me anymore. He doesn't 
fix things. He doesn't, you know, but it's like, well, you also kind of took control over everything. And and he just kind of sat back and was like, okay, I don't want to fight. Right. So I'd rather just, yeah. And it is important for us as women too, to make sure that we are ensuring that the men in our lives have a role in our lives. If we go to them and say, you know, listen, I people like people say, should we have joint bank accounts? I'm like, you have to have your own bank account, make your own money, put it in your own bank account. And if you guys decide on a joint one, take it from your account into the joint one, but always, always be independent and always be able to take care of yourself, right? You, you have women who are like, he controlled all the money. Uh, you know, I, I never worked. And so I can't leave this abusive relationship. Never, ever let yourself be in that position where you think you can't take care of yourself. There always needs to be some way that you can take care of yourself because listen, it might not be an abusive relationship. It might be your partner dies and they didn't put their affairs in order. And now what, right? So we do always need to be prepared to look after ourselves at any given time for whatever reason. But we need to create a role in our partner, for our partner in our life, because we don't want them to say, why am I here? You say I'm smarter than you. I make more money than you. I don't need you. I can do this myself. Go away. Um, I, I can, you know, I can fix this myself. I can do this myself. I can kill that spider myself, whatever it is. I don't need you for anything. And then men feel a sense of frustration. What is my role? If I'm not here to help you, if I'm not here to be here for you in any way, shape or form, why am I even here at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the man who wants to have the control over the money, that's a ruler archetype. And I have women in my family that are married, happily married for many decades to rulers. They've never worked, you know, they raise kids. They still don't work, whatever. And, and it works for them. Right. Because it just does. Right. But, um, you know, there's, there are situations where, especially if you're dealing with a ruler, a lot of times where they want you to kind of depend on them. And that can be a good or bad thing, right? As you know, he can control, manipulate, and then you're stuck. So I always say to, you know, definitely sign a prenup um, to protect yourself. Like you said, have a savings. If he, if he's giving you money monthly, like stash it away in a savings account, exactly. always have a nest egg, because if you don't have a nest egg, you're your base chakra is in your sense of stability and security is always reliant outside of you. And then it creates a level of like insecurity or even fear. Right. And then fear, as you know, when you're afraid, you start attracting in bad things. So it's always good to have, even if you're not working to have skills that if you had to go out and do something, you have a skill of some sort, right. Cause some people have kids and then they, they want to raise kids. And I always say that like, you know, the first five years of a kid's life, needs to be with the mother. But then after that, you find your independence again, you find your you start filling yourself up again, because you've, you've given your service to raising that kid to now go off to school. But um, it's really important to have passions, your passions, and, you know, something that you're working towards, even, you know, because I meet a lot of women that are like, well, I don't want to work, but you have to find something you like doing, because then you will do it, right. And some people, you know, they find joy in teaching, like coming on YouTube, like you do and writing books. And, you know, that's your gift. And uh, you, you've learned all you've learned through your life. And now you're teaching other women, that's your gift. And God will pay you for your gifts, if you use your gifts, but you can't suppress them. And just, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with like, necessarily depending on a man, like my partner is the provider, I make my own money, not because I have a fear of like, you know, being on the street, but just because like, what else am I going to do all day? Like twiddle my thumbs and wait for him to get home, you know? And then it turns into this, like you said, like this codependency of like neediness and nobody really likes neediness. Right. So, <laughs> well, the, I mean, men, well, here's the thing, like selfish short-term thinkers, they want you to be needy because they want you to need them in order for you to feel so good. And then they manipulate your emotions and, um, you know, and, and they, they keep you on your toes and they keep you feeling bad so that you keep needing them. Right. So they keep destabilizing you so that you keep going to them saying, Oh no, make me feel better. And so like a narcissist kind of, it's, like it's a, kind of I don't like to use that word because yeah. it's overused and yeah. 
I'm not in a position to diagnose anybody. And I think most of the time when we're talking about, you know, when we're using the word narcissist, we're actually just talking about somebody who's dysfunctional, um, you know, various levels of dysfunction. But listen, it takes a psychiatrist, psychologist to diagnose a narcissist, yeah. and I'm not going to do that. Um, but selfish short-term thinkers, guys, you know, listen, there's good selfish short-term thinkers. There's bad selfish short-term thinkers. The good ones are honest. The bad ones are manipulative. And so they do want to keep you destabilized so that you keep leaning on them, hoping to feel better. Yeah. And so generous long-term thinkers, like men, men, one of the attractive qualities to them is when you don't need them. And so they know that they're with you because you choose them, not because you are reliant on them. It depends on the archetype, actually. Yeah. So I, I would say, um, you know, more highly evolved men. Yeah. Because they, they never, I don't think anybody wants to feel like, oh, they're choosing me because they will be on the street if not. Right. But uh, rulers and entrepreneur archetypes, they do like to feel needed in a way. It makes them feel like men, you know, makes them feel like, oh, she can't live without me. She needs me to some degree to protect her, to, whatever right and to, for some men it's a driving force to want to do better and be better but you know if you're thinking of like the manager archetype he likes the queen he wants a woman who's like a boss who who has her own thing going where he's like wow like look at my wife she's amazing you know there are men who like that too so it just depends on the archetype of man so what are the man archetypes what's the definitions there yeah so we have um the two feminine uh, archetypes of men are the creator and the traitor. And the creator is a man who's very smart, very intelligent, um, very gifted, like an Albert Einstein would be. Um, but he's a man that's not highly ambitious. Um, he kind of needs a woman to push him to be ambitious. Um, and he usually wants to do something very innovative, very different. A lot of artists are the creator, obviously. Um, and they just, they focus on what they're doing. They're not very social. They can be kind of permanent loner types, uh, but they need a woman to be, to help them basically to get to where they need to go. And then you have the trader. And this is a man who is very outgoing. He likes sports. He, um, is very charming. A lot of actors are this, or, uh, public speakers, men that are like public speakers or managers of hotels or whatever the case is. And he likes the idea of being in a power couple with a woman. Um, he likes to support a woman. Prince Harry is a manager archetype. He followed Megan to America, right? His purpose is kind of her, you know, managers kind of make their purpose. Um, they're kind of lazy. They can be kind of lazy. So the shadow of them would be like a man who lives off of a woman. They can be very romantic, highly romantic and very emotionally like this. Um, but they have a hard time um, actually working. They want to be rich, but they kind of just, you know, they, they feel like they can just gamble it away or someone will give it to them um, or they have to be inspired by a woman. So these two need a woman in their life to kind of push them. Then you have the entrepreneur archetype. The standard of this guy is like Russell, not Russell, what's his name? Richard Branson. Okay. So he's a man that loves adventure, excitement, the thrill he likes to have his hand in a lot of pots. He'll usually marry a woman who's kind of like his secretary who kind of supports him um, to be also the stay at home wife and mom and kind of give him his freedom to go travel, to go do whatever he needs to do. Um, and, you know, they tend to not really be that faithful, but they can be. And then the ruler archetype is a man who um, he's the more, well, I would say him and the entrepreneur are the most masculine, but he's a man that, um, in his like extreme, he wants power. He's he's a politician or he's a man in military or he's a police officer. He's a man in authority. Um, he likes to dress in suits. Um, he's very classy. He likes expensive things. He likes for people and situations to obey. He likes order, law and order. He likes a woman to follow him and obey his leadership, right? Um, he's a man that would be very successful. A lot of wall street guys are rulers or entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are more of like the party guy, like the models and bottles, like party guy rulers are more calculated, um, and serious, you know, a ruler and his like dark side is a man that like, if he were to kill a woman, it's like very calculated and very unemotional. Whereas a manager would like kill a woman in like a jealous rage. Right. So that's kind of like, <laughs> it does that make sense. It's kind of like a loose <laughs> Canon. 
yeah, the kind of a, a loose um, uh, definition. But yeah, there's different things that uh, qualify uh, different archetypes. And sometimes men can be kind of a blend. Like my partner is, he's such a ruler in certain ways, but then in other ways where, you know, cause we have masculine and feminine, you have the feminine males. And in a lot of ways, he's very much like a manager. And, and sometimes I'm like, which one is he? He's very much like kind of in the middle, um, which surprised me um, about him because I always thought he was much more of a ruler. But now as we've been together longer, he's kind of showing more of manager archetypes. He's very romantic. He likes that I come on here. He likes that I have an opinion. Rulers don't usually like to marry or date a woman who has strong opinions about things because he wants to be the man, right? So, um, and I always tell clients, you know, would you rather or ask them, would you rather be respected for or cherished for how you feel or respected for what you think? Um, I read that in a book once because mental energy is masculine, as you know, and feeling energy is feminine. So um, if you'd rather be, you know, the feminine person, you probably are more connected to your feelings. But if you're a woman that's more mental based, you're probably more masculine. Yeah. Um, so I wonder then if I'm more masculine because like I come from a very logical place. Like the reason why, um, men appreciate what I say is because of the logic behind what it is that I do. Yeah. So the smart woman is the queen archetype and the wise woman is also the mother, the queen mother. She's very poised. You know, the girl archetype is a woman that will throw temper tantrums and emotional, you know, jealousy, right? Whereas a queen, like Jacqueline Kennedy, for instance, there was um, a story where she found Marilyn Monroe's panties in the bed and came out and said to her husband, uh, you got the wrong size. These are too big for me. The next time you want to buy me panties, get me the right. She was, you know, she was alluding to him that like, I'm smaller. I know these aren't for me. And, you know, instead of having this fury of jealousy and craziness, she was very poised. You know, queens really respect themselves. They uh, care more about their mission and themselves than they do about like pleasing a man, if you will. So she will choose herself first over a man, whereas a girl lover will choose a man over herself. Okay. And, and where did these archetypes come from? Carl Jung was the originator. And he's a, um, so he was a psychologist. Yeah. I think he's a psychiatrist. Yeah. Psychiatrist. Um, and I know in, in psychiatry, like, you know, in sociology, psychiatry, there's like, there's different um, sort of bubbles, if you will. Do you know what I mean? Um, there's, there's, there's certain like um, categories of psychology and you have like a thought process that falls under each category. Um, if you don't know where I'm going with this, that's okay, because I barely remember it from like my psych classes. So, but like, you know, I, I remember like we would study like sort of different thought avenues of psychology and sociology, and then uh, study the people who were like developing, you know, each of those avenues. So maybe somebody in the comments at some point um, can let me know what avenue Carl Jung was in, but Okay, so and how long ago this this is like I mean this is like decades ago where yeah. you put these out. Mm -hmm. um, do you you know because like I asked you were on a live the other day and I'm like what am I? And you're like you're kind of a little bit of everything and and you caught that the Empress I believe. Yeah, the Empress. Yeah, this is kind of like my own spin on things and I guess my own take on it is the Empress. Um, you know, even if you look at like the tarot deck, if that's something that you've ever looked at, um, she's all four queens in one. So, and that's kind of the elements too of the girl and the, uh, the masculine is we all have air in us. We all have fire in us. We all have water in us and we have, um, earth, right? So the earth element, um, she would be the mother archetype the water would be the girl, the lover would be fire, and then the queen is air. So they have all, you know, those are all four elements. And the empress is a woman who has all four. She embodies all four archetype energies. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, because I feel like with you, I see like this playfulness in you, this kind of like when you interact with your husband on lives, I can tell that you like in your teaching, you're, you're like me and you're teaching, you're assertive, you share your ideas, but when you're with your man, you like, 
it's like, he, you know, not that you put him above you, but you know what I mean? You, you fall into your girl energy with him, this playful, flirtatious, loving energy, right? So you embody that as well. Um, but I would say probably in your profession, you're definitely like a queen mother archetype. Um, and I know you definitely have lover energy in you too. This, you know, this sexual wild woman nature, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the lover archetype is a woman who wears red. So you and I are both wearing red today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. So I was uh, watching your live the other day and you're like, you know, a little bit of everything. I'm like, I'm every woman. Yes, you are every woman. <laughs> so um, going back to the male archetypes, we have the, the creative and the manager and you say they need a woman. Mm-hmm. Would you say these are maybe red flag male types that women should maybe not fall for? And then, and then in the, what is, was it the ruler one? Mm-hmm. Um, there was one where you said they tend to not be um, monogamous. Often. The entrepreneur. The entrepreneur. The entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. Well, they all can cheat for different reasons. The creator usually won't cheat because the creator archetype is known for not having a he kind of has lower self-esteem and he doesn't have that like masculine drive to pursue women. So he's actually the one that kind of gets cheated on because, you know, if a woman is with him, he kind of needs a mother archetype. This is a man that might need a mother. I knew a woman or I know a woman who is married to a creator archetype and his only job is to create music. He's been very successful. He's worked with Michael Jackson and a bunch of other people. And she's the breadwinner. She fixes the things in the house. She manages everything. You know, she's definitely the masculine in the relationship, but he gives her that emotional need that she is lacking in herself. Like she wants that, like a man that's emotional and sensitive and he is emotional and sensitive. So, you know, she doesn't mind being the provider. So, and a lot of women will marry men like this and then they hate being the provider. They want him to stand up and do it. So that's his kind of downfall. A manager will leave or cheat on a woman if like she's down and out in life. So if he's with a queen archetype and let's say she quits her job or gets fired and then she just kind of decides she doesn't want to go to work again, that's when he'll start looking for other options. You know, Um, like Brad Pitt, for instance, he's a manager. He, they're kind of like the social climber in a way. Like he left Jennifer Aniston for Angelina Jolie. So they kind of they'll be with you and they'll be loyal. They're very loyal if you're like the queen for them. But if you kind of lose your queen energy, I guess, if you will, then they kind of, that's the man that like, I hear a lot of women that will say, well, my uh, dad left my traditional mother for a lawyer queen. Those are the kind of men that do that. Uh, The ruler will leave a woman when she's more successful than him, or if she tries to control or dominate him, or if she tries to compete with him, um, and she puts her work ahead of him. So Jay-Z is a ruler, and he made a remark once that, you know, when Beyonce started putting her career ahead of him, that's when he kind of, he got upset, right? Because they want to be number one. The entrepreneur is like a man that, needs excitement and thrill. Like he kind of, I've always been told that he like will always cheat, but I, um, I've met entrepreneur archetype men that have had cheating in their past, but then they get over it. Right. Because cheating, it comes from lack of self-discipline. So, you know, if you're an evolved man and you know, I think that you can get past to those urges. Yeah. But they all have like their own red flags, right? Like manager has things that, cause I know a lot of Queens, client of mine who um would attract in managers and they would end up just mooching and living off of them you know and then they sometimes will have issues with drinking or partying or just kind of being lazy so that's kind of sometimes what they do they're the men that would want to do 50 50 that you know we you probably see a lot of women that are like no <laughs> is it possible to be like just none of this because like I listen to you talk about the males and I'm like my husband is nothing like any of this Mm -hmm. so what's your husband like um extremely loyal and devoted also very hardworking and entrepreneurial very um uh very uh ambitious very ambitious very long-term thinking um very smart with his money 
So not a big, not like not a spender on frivolous things. Um, he wants like drives a beat up car so that the money can go to buy things for the business, to expand the business. I think your husband's a ruler. Uh, rulers are very practical. They like to be in control of things. Um, they'll spend money, but only on things that will up their value, right? Like, and sometimes they'll buy expensive things, but, um, and they can in their shadow be really flashy, but they're usually more practical spenders. Um, they're very organized. They're very strategic about things they do. They do things with contracts. Um, they have a system of how they, you know, work. Um, they like to, they're very ambitious. So they like to work and, um, they like to provide and they can be very loyal too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like when you're around him, you sink into like your girl nature because rulers like the girl, they like a woman that kind of looks up to him and is somewhat, um, they like emotional women. They like a woman that's loving with them and, um, shares her emotions and her, you know, her devotion to him. They like that because deep down, they're very sensitive rulers. Uh, they just won't show it to anybody, but their wife, their wife is the only one that will see that like loving, generous, romantic side, but with everybody else, they're very like poker face and very business-like. Yeah. That's, that sounds like him. It's, it's really funny because, um, he, I mean, definitely he's, he is emotional. He loves, our affection. He loves it that I'm very affectionate and effusive with him. He doesn't need words of affirmation, but like effusive in terms of like just showing him my lovey doveyness. Um, but um, like I have friends who, you know, like we've been together for 16 years. And I there's some people I've been friends with almost for that long. And I have like a yearly party. And some of my friends, they barely see him except for that yearly party. And so it, it does take them a long time to get to know him because he's always at work. Like I'm socializing, but he's at work and yeah, they're now, after 10, sorry, they're workaholics. He works 12, 14 hours a day, you know, 80 to hundred hours a week. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have friends who are now saying, wow, I never knew how funny he was because now he's, you know, he's, and, and the, this type of person, like you know, the, the kind of people who are open to the no kissing for three months dating rule are the ones who love the aspect of opening up slowly. I'm not going to vomit who I am on everybody. Like just because you come into my environment doesn't mean you get all of me. I need to figure you out first mm -hmm. and then I'll show you incrementally who I am. The more I get to know you, the more I feel you're worthy of understanding the human inside of me because, uh, you know, they, they're just kind of sort of observe and then show, not show, and then see how you react to them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that does sound like him. That does sound a lot like him, actually. Yeah, I like the ruler because they're very, um, like my partner, as I mentioned, he's a ruler. He's also very funny, but they're very, um, yeah, they like to work. They're workaholics. So they're not super social. Like a manager archetype is a man who wants to go out to concerts. He wants to go out and do things and be social and go to dinner parties and stuff. Whereas the ruler, like, you know, he might host dinner parties at his home, but he's not somebody that's going to be wanting to go out a lot and do a lot of social things. Yeah. So I'm looking at the comments, right? My, my followers, while we're talking about this and, and something that they're kind of speaking up about is the like the, just the amount of labels right like why do we have to place people into groups what's the point of having these labels it just makes a relationship so much easier when you know what you're dealing with if you have a man who's more of a masculine man you're gonna know i don't pursue this man i don't call this man i don't initiate plans i don't buy him gifts, you know, like, cause a lot of these, I mean, and you did a video on the whole Chelsea modern warrior guy thing, right? She was like, let me come see you. Let me buy lingerie. Like she was chasing him. Right. You don't, if you're with a masculine man, you don't do that. You, you can do that with feminine men. So if a man is more of a feminine man, cause you know, we have this whole thing. I mean, I was taught to never call boys, never call a guy, always have him pursue you. But if you're dealing with a more feminine man, they like that. So all these women that are more masculine feel like, well, I have to wait for a man to pursue me. But if you're dealing with a more feminine man, he actually likes a woman that takes charge and like goes after what she wants. So that's acceptable with those kinds of men and it will work really well. So it just gives you more tools on how to like choose the right person 
And then when you're with the person, you, it's just, it, it sets the foundation of being able to have a long-term relationship because you know, they're kind of like their energy and how to work with their energy. And that's really important as you know, in being a, in a relationship. I think it is important to know, and that, that is something that I haven't touched on, um, is, is there are some men out there who are more feminine than masculine. And, you know, I've always kept it really super simple with the way that I, I label things, selfish short-term thinker, generous long-term thinker. I teach women that um, it is important to let them know the door is open, they're available. The men are welcome to step through, right? So doing something that I call the hit and run flirting technique, which is going up to a stranger, you know, like you're in a coffee shop, you see somebody who's interesting to you, you have a short conversation, you say, you know, I'd love to continue this conversation, but I have to go. Um, here is my contact information. If you want to get together, then let me know. And so that's, you know, I say to them, if they want you, they'll come get you. Right. And there's that chase. And that's how you're going to get that masculine man who wants to earn what he has versus the selfish short term thinker, the lazy guy who wants you to do all the work. So how can a woman, you know, quickly, maybe, is there a way to quickly understand the difference between a masculine man and a feminine man? That's a great question. Um, I guess like I'm intuitive, so I can always just feel it or sense it with a guy, you know? Um, I guess if he's more, um, I don't know, that's such a hard, hard question to ask. I go over this in my workshops, like how to identify, but I feel like it's really hard to identify somebody like right when you first meet them, right? You kind of got to get to know them. But I always have like specific questions I ask. And then, you know, it, based on how they answer, I kind of know like what I'm dealing with. So I think it's about asking the right questions to kind of understand somebody. Is there a particular question that is most revealing? Yeah, well, I'll ask, like, I'm from the South. So I'm from like a really traditional, like upbringing. And um, I ask a man, are you traditional? How do you feel about being the full time provider for a woman? Um, or are you more progressive, you know, and if a man is like, Oh, I think that like, you know, I believe in women's empowerment. And if she wants to split 50 50, he's probably not a very masculine man, right? Because he he likes a woman who kind of takes control or he could be lazy, right? Um, he likes a woman who takes control, makes her own money. And, um, you know, I feel like the masculine man, he's always a provider. He's always a protector. But if a man is like, oh yeah, women's empowerment, she should work and, you know, split bills and whatever, then he's probably more of a feminine man um, who's more based on his emotions. So um, from experience, um, I've had two husbands. And my first one, we paid 50, 50. And my second one, he's a provider because it's easier for him, given the amount of hours that he works, it's easier for him to pay the bills than it is for him to be responsible for household chores. Mm -hmm. And so we have that, that understanding between us. We have that agreement, that negotiation. I'm in charge of the house. He's in charge of the bills. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, listen, I have, I have somebody who cooks for me. I have somebody who cleans for me. So I make my money and I invest it in people who I can delegate those chores to so that I can focus more on the work that I want to do. That's if the queen. She delegates. <laughs> like with her, right with her scepter. So my first husband that I pay 50 50 with, I would definitely say he's more feminine. I would say that. Um, and in fact, his his next wife is more masculine. Like she definitely is a very, a very masculine energy. And she's a bisexual woman too. And she was the kind of woman who likes more feminine girls. And, and because she feels herself more into her, her masculine power, you know, I think in general, honestly, and then yeah. here I am in this next relationship with a husband who's like, I'm listen, I, when we go out, it's like, I got this right. And it's like, you know, uh, outing number five, I'll be like, baby, let me get this. And he's like, okay. But otherwise outing number one, two, three, four, I'll be like, I can get this. He goes, no, 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 no. I got it. Right. So he's he's much more comfortable being the provider, even outside of the home. So and he is somebody that I definitely call a man man, very much a man man. Um, so it is it is interesting to just kind of 
you know, take a look at that. I'm going to, I'm going to keep with my language, which is selfish short-term thinker, a generous long-term thinker, and just keep it also so, so super simple for my people um, because I like it that way. Let me ask you this, and I'm going to make this like our, our closing question. Is there an ideal, is there an ideal type coming together? Yeah, the different archetypes go with different um, archetypes. So the ruler would go with the girl lover. The entrepreneur would go with the girl mother. The creator would go with the queen mother. And then the manager would go with the queen lover. So I go over this in my workshops on like, you know, how to identify who you are. um, And then you can identify the right archetype. And then I go over like how, how to identify them. Uh, what they look for, how to keep them interested, because different archetypes of men need different things, right? And that's, again, going back to why should we place people in boxes? Well, now you know what their needs are, versus having to trial and error for many years and figure it out yourself, right? You kind of have like a blueprint. Of course, we're all, we all have our own unique personality. But I think it's, you know, it's something that is, um, it just makes relationships easier. And again, you know, going back to what I said before, you know, establishing the masculine and feminine, um, you know, I know those are labels, but it is, it is within us. We have those two elements within us and we can't ignore that. Right. So yeah. The yin and the yang. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I am primarily feminine, but I certainly have that, that masculinity inside of me. Mm -hmm. Um, now, if people are resonating with this and they want to take part in your workshop, how do they find that? So you can click on my link in the bio. Um, there's like a link tree thing in there. And there's a tab that says work with me. I'm doing two workshops this weekend, actually, um, on Saturday. So if anybody wants to sign up, it's kind of um, last minute. But yeah, through my link or AlexiTurner.com. <laughs> and your TikTok is at Empress Collective. Yes. Are there other ways that people can find you? You know, I'm actually restarting. I used to do YouTube. I'm restarting YouTube. This is going to be my first episode, which is exciting. And um, so I'll put that as well. And I don't really use Instagram. I'm not really a social media person. I kind of just came on TikTok to do this. So yeah, I love it. I love it. It's it's fun when you when you come across my for you page. So um oh, same this- with you. I just bought your book. Um uh I started reading it yesterday. I wasn't I think it was fix that shit. I think that's the that's the one I bought for people in relationships. Yeah. It starts yeah. off with like me and my first husband in the car driving in a poopy mood. I think was that in the introduction? Yeah, it's in the very okay. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I kind of always like, I have a habit of like skipping to like the first chapter because <laughs> so, I like want to see the meat of the story, but I'm definitely going to go back and read the introduction. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Alexi, for coming and talking to me today. This was really awesome. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was really great being able to talk with you. I'll see you soon again on TikTok. My yes. love. Of course. Thank you so much. Bye lovely. Bye.